Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you an anthology horror film. Amusement. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie opens up with a high school yearbook featuring three young girls from high school named Shelby, Tabitha, and Lisa. Tabitha is described as most likely to succeed, Lisa is shown as most likely to be famous, and Shelby is tagged as most likely to shine. Then, the yearbook from the same high school features an unnamed boy, diagnosed with psychopathic tendencies, implying that he is extremely dangerous. The scene then moves to the first segment, featuring a now grown-up Shelby with her boyfriend. The two are having a long drive on a highway. Shelby is asleep while her boyfriend is driving the car. Her boyfriend is entertaining himself by consistently following cars to create a convoy. She wakes up briefly, and she tells her boyfriend to stop speeding up to follow cars. After that, she goes back to sleep. A truck overtakes them, and now they are driving behind the truck while a jeep is trailing their car from behind. At this point, it appears that they are taking the same route with the truck and the jeep behind them. They make a stop at the gas station on a low traffic highway, and both of the two vehicles in their convoy also make a stop. The three drivers walk out of their vehicles to refill the gas. The truck driver tells them that there is heavy traffic on the main highway so he suggests that they take an alternative route with him. Shelby's boyfriend and the jeep driver agree to take the alternative route. Shelby sees a woman behind the truck, and she becomes hesitant to trust the truck driver. While driving on the isolated and dark part of the highway, the woman from the truck shows a help sign in the window. Out of nowhere, the woman jumps out of the window of the fast-moving truck, causing her to fall toward their car. The truck keeps moving forwards, since the truck driver fails to notice that the woman jumped. Shelby and the Jeep driver attend to the woman, while the Jeep driver tells Shelby's boyfriend to chase the truck to identify its plate number. He keeps following the truck driver, who eventually drives back. He drives back too, and finds the Jeep driver lying on the road, while Shelby and the woman are gone. The Jeep driver tells him that the truck driver took the two women and headed toward the small house in the woods. The boyfriend and the Jeep driver drive together to the house using the Jeep. There, the jeep driver brings a hammer while silently walking to the house. On the other side, the truck driver is talking on the phone, saying he is the father of the woman. Apparently, the woman is a drug addict and he is taking her to rehab. When the truck driver walks out of the door, the jeep driver instantly hits his head, causing him to die. Shelby's boyfriend looks at the back of the jeep, and he finds Shelby and the woman tied up together. At this point, he realizes that a jeep driver is a dangerous person. He tries to drive the jeep, but he does not have the key. The jeep driver then smashes his head with the hammer, while the terrified Shelby tries to scream for help. The scene then moves to Tabitha, who comes to her aunt's house. She will babysit her two cousins for the rest of the night, while her aunt is out of town. When she arrives at the house, she asks the two cousins where their babysitter is. The two say the babysitter has already left. She looks for the babysitter upstairs, and a clown doll surprises her. Night comes, and it's heavily raining outside. A strange man in a raincoat knocks at the door. He claims to be the babysitter's boyfriend, and is looking for the babysitter, claiming that the babysitter still does not come back. Tabitha answers that the babysitter had already left before she arrived. Later, she walks to her assigned room in the house to prepare for sleep. The room is full of clown dolls, and a realistic life-sized clown doll is sitting in the rocking chair. She observes the room and settles her things. She then locks the doors and windows. After that, she puts her two cousins to sleep. She walks back to her room and appears to be scared of the life-sized clown doll. She feels that it is real, but she's too afraid to touch it. The television in the room suddenly opens, and the remote is in the clown's hand. She quickly grabs it and turns it off. Then, she goes to sleep despite being too uncomfortable with the real-sized clown doll in the room. While she is asleep like a pig, the life-sized clown doll's head turns around. It turns out that the clown doll in the room is a real clown, and it's looking at her in a creepy way. She wakes up from a call on the telephone in the hallway, and goes to answer the phone call, while unbeknownst to her that the clown has already moved. The caller turns out to be her aunt, who is just checking on her two cousins. She asks about the life-size clown in the chair, and her aunt says they do not have a life-size clown in the house. At this point, she realizes that the clown is real. Before she can react, the clown is already gone out of the chair. She drops the telephone out of fear and walks to her cousin's room and locks its door. Her cousins say she should not be scared of the clown, since the clown just wants to play. They reveal that the strange man in the raincoat earlier is the clown. She then says to her cousins that the clown is dangerous. The clown arrives with a sharp metal blade, and he's slowly destroying the door. 
Tabitha immediately pushes the cabinet to block the door. Then, she lets her cousins jump into the window first, to let them escape and ask for help. Before she can climb out of the window, the clown already manages to enter the room with a laugh. The clown's laugh is similar to the jeep driver, implying that the clown and the jeep driver are the same people. To defend herself, she smashes the clown's head with a lamp. The clown is briefly stunned, allowing herself to jump out of the window in time. The clown continues to chase her, so she hides in a storage room in the yard. There, she finds the dead body of the babysitter hidden in the cabinet, implying that the clown possibly killed the babysitter earlier. The body drops to her, causing her to fall to the ground. After that, she passes out, and she's not aware of the next events. Afterward, Tabitha wakes up in an interrogation room, where a man in an FBI agent uniform asks her questions. She is still in shock and cannot utter a single word. At that moment, she remembers her childhood moments with her friends, Lisa and Shelby. During those times, they take a look at each other's doll houses. The boy, who is deemed to be a psychopath at the beginning of the film, comes to play with them. The boy calls their doll houses boring. He then shows his doll house to them, which scares Tabitha to be a goose with goosebumps. But the psycho boy finds his doll house funny. The boy's doll house turns out to contain a rat with an exposed stomach. Back to the present, the FBI agent leaves the room, and the psychiatrist enters to speak with her. The psychiatrist asks her about her childhood friend Lisa, and the scene moves to the abduction of Lisa. Lisa and her roommate are in the club. Her roommate meets a guy, who temporarily stays in the old pension house. The roommate comes with the guy, and she promises to come back home later. That night, the roommate did not come back home. Lisa thinks her roommate is just having fun, so she spends the night with her boyfriend. The next day comes, and her roommate has not come back yet, making her extremely worried. She comes to the old pension house with her boyfriend. The pension house appears to be ancient-looking and not well-maintained. She knocks at the door, and the masked attendant tells her that their beds are full. The attendant refuses to open the door for her. Out of desperation, she tells her boyfriend to use his government badge to enter the pension house. The attendant lets the boyfriend enter the pension and tells him to wait in the gaming room for a while. The boyfriend gets amazed by an ancient device in the room. The attendant says the device plays music and the player will get a surprise in the end. The attendant then tells him to try it. The boyfriend plays the ancient device. At the end of the music, the device releases a sharp metal that stabs the boyfriend in the eye. That night, Lisa is still waiting for her boyfriend to come out of the pension house. She keeps calling him, but he no longer answers the phone. She then decides to sneak into the pension house. Upstairs, she finds empty beds, and a deaf man is sitting in one of the beds. She asks for the deaf man's help. He says the attendant is not allowing them to leave the pension house. As they hear noises outside, he helps her to hide in the bed while he locks the door. A woman suddenly moves inside the bed mattress, and it turns out to be her roommate. She opens up the other mattresses, and there are dead bodies hidden inside them. She asks for the deaf man's help to free her roommate. Meanwhile, her roommate, who can barely speak, says that the deaf man is the killer, revealing that the killer is only pretending to be deaf. The killer then reveals his knife while releasing a chicken laugh, similar to the clown and the jeep driver. Lisa then ends up being inside the mattress herself. The scene then moves back to Tabitha in the interrogation room with the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist asks her about Lisa and Shelby, and reveals to the two that the three of them are in separate cells in the building. The psychiatrist figures out that the three of them went to the same high school as the Psycho Boys. It turns out that the Psycho Boy became her patient in the Asylum for the Insane. She then realizes that the man in the FBI uniform is not a real FBI agent, but the Psycho Boy. After realizing this, her face is filled with terror. She immediately leaves the interrogation room. Tabitha eventually walks out of the cell room to look for Lisa and Shelby. In the hallways, she sees the man in the FBI uniform and the psychiatrist lying dead on the floor. She asks for his help, and the man releases a chicken laugh again, similar to the jeep driver, the clown, and the deaf man. It's then revealed to her that the psycho boy is also the man who attacked her and her friends, Lisa and Shelby. She quickly runs away into the maze-like building, while a psycho boy is chasing her after her smell with his creepy chicken laugh. She hides in a room with glass walls, and the psycho boy locks her up there. The Psycho Boy activates a machine that pushes the two walls to each other. It appears the walls are crushing Tabitha, but the walls eventually stop moving. The lights open up, exposing Lisa and Shelby behind the glass walls. The two girls are hanging in a cross position, while their organs appear to be exposed. They appear to be like the rat in the psychopath's dollhouse. 
The boy reveals himself to flex his insanity, and he grabs a knife. He walks near Shelby and points the knife at her, causing her to shake in terror. Tabitha then begs him to get away from him. He says that it's funny. Just then, he grabs the cloth out of Shelby. It turns out that their organs are not really exposed, but it only appears to be exposed because of the cloth with organs. Tabitha laughs, and the psycho boy laughs with her, but in a chicken voice. He appears to be happy that Tabitha finds his show funny. He goes near her, and as they are laughing together, she instantly stabs him. While he is stunned on the floor, she frees up both Lisa and Shelby. The three immediately run away, but the psycho boy manages to stab Lisa's sexy body, seemingly ending her sexy life. Without a choice, Tabitha and Shelby continue to run away. The two eventually reach a long ladder leading up to an exit to the building. Tabitha climbs first, and Shelby follows her. Meanwhile, the psycho boy is desperately trying to grab them. Unfortunately, he manages to grab Shelby, causing her to fall with him. Tabitha continues climbing up with a heavy heart, knowing that her friends got killed. The ladder leads to a locked house, and she needs to find an escape. Suddenly, an elevator device activates. She takes a look downward, only to find that the psychopath is still alive. Apparently, Shelby dropped to the floor first, and her greasy body caught the psycho boy, allowing him to survive. Tabitha enters a door to hide from the psychopath. She soon realizes that the door leads to a truck container. The psycho boy reveals his psychopathic muscles from the driver's seat. He drives the old truck away, and its engine suddenly malfunctions. Knowing he will check on her, she grabs a metal blade to defend herself. As he peeps in the hole, she instantly stabs his ugly face. The metal blade pierces through his head, sending him straight to meet Jesus. Tabitha manages to survive the psycho boy's killing spree. In the end, she says her life is never the same after the event, as the psychopath's chicken laugh remains inside her head. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.